Hi, I'm Eric Egley, and welcome to this month's edition of Tech Tuesday. For a lot of years, I used a mouse to do all my post-production work in Photoshop. And I was in Photoshop world, uh, this was years ago, and I came across the Wacom uh, show booth, and I started testing out their tablets. And this, I, I found, has been just a fantastic way to do post-production editing work in Photoshop. It saves me time, it's much more refined than a mouse, and you can do much more detailed work with this device. I personally use the Wacom uh, Intuos 3. This is a wired device, um, and I've used this for a lot of years. It's an older version, but it has held up fantastically. Uh, it also has a set of uh, pre -program or programmable buttons and sliders on each side, so you can set it up to work with the way you work uh, in Photoshop. Um, there's also another, the newer version of this tablet is the Intuos 4. It's wireless, and this is great for when you're doing work, let's say on an airplane. I like taking it along on an airplane in my hotel room. It's real thin, it fits right in your computer case, and you don't even know it's there. It's a great product. Um, I just want to make sure you know that I have no affiliation with Wacom. Uh, I just believe in this product. I've used it for a lot of years, and it's just a fantastic tool for me. Uh, like I said, it saves a lot of time, and it is a very refined instrument. So what I'd like to do is, number one, show you why I use it and show you how I use it in Photoshop. Uh, let's take a look at an image and a uh, masking technique, because that's generally where I get into it, and uh, show you exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to go into our system preferences. And I just want to show you a few of the things that uh, you can customize with the Wacom tablet and stylus. And maybe if my computer would cooperate, there we go. Okay, and here we go. So what we have here on the opening screen here is the stylus, how you can customize the stylus. Everything from pressure to uh, tilt sensitivity, which is great because some of the new uh, brushes in CS5 actually sense uh, where your stylus is and the tilt on it, and uh, it corresponds with the type of brush that you're using. So that's really cool. The um, you can also program s different pens or styluses that you that you have. I have one that I keep in my uh, my computer bag, and then I have one that I keep in the studio at all times. So I can customize each one of those depending upon the feel and the the type that I have. Um, really cool is the fact that you can customize it for each application, and uh, obviously you can see here that Photoshop is my main application that I use. So that's the one I, I customize it to. Uh, you can customize the eraser, uh, and you can also map your tablet, which means uh, if you have two different screens that you're using, you can basically subdivide your tablet, uh, one half for one screen and one half for the other. I like using the full tablet for the image, you know, full image area that I'm working on. Um, and also your quick keys on the tablet itself, you can customize those per uh, application. So that's, you know, a quick uh, overview on the preferences menu. Let's get into Photoshop here. And this is an image I've been working on. Uh, one of the things that is really difficult for, you know, anybody uh, basically is to separate hair from a background. And there are a lot of uh, plugins that you can use, but Sometimes even after you use the plugins, you got to go in and refine just a little bit. And so that's where the pen comes in really handy, uh, especially with the opacity. And the first thing you'd want to do is make sure your uh, brush preferences dialog box is open so that you can adjust that as you need to. And I'm going to select a brush that is specifically for use with hair. And I'm going to adjust that down just a little bit. There we go. And make sure we're on our mask over here on that uh, image layer. And from there, I'm going to turn off shape dynamics and just keep on uh, the opacity setting. And let's take a look. And you can see up here that I'm just sort of brushing it 
making those the hair just a little wispier basically so that it'll it'll blend in a little better with the background and because we're on a mask I'm using black at the moment to, to um, paint away and if we change that to white obviously we can refine that even further and, and make that hair exactly how we want to uh, let me go into a different brush here because I just want to show you exactly um, how refined you can get with this tablet and I'm going to hit shape dynamics up here uh, let's see go in here pin pressure and I want to make that real tight so I can I can go in there I'm still on the mask uh, make sure it's on black because so, we're painting out and I can get in there real tight if I need to and actually I'd probably yeah, you can see here where I'm getting real real tight okay so there again um, it's simply a matter of how refined you want to get but it's real hard to do this stuff with a mouse real hard so that's why I opt for the uh, tablet uh, pretty much exclusively when I'm dealing with with anything any image ed editing okay so let's take a look at the final image here um, and put it all together with the background because that's where the uh, rubber meets the road here and we'll take a look at exactly how how good it looks so there you go very natural look it blends right in with the background and um, the other thing that I used uh, the pen a lot on is areas here let me kill this areas like down here where the uh, for the shadow areas and the drum you can see the the opacity of that is feathered in and, and uh, gradated in so that it blends in real nice with the uh, background and looks like a very natural shadow so things like that it comes in real handy for so that's some of the basics of the Wacom tablet definitely try it out at a store and definitely once you get home give it two or three days to get a feel for this instrument uh, once you do I'm pretty certain you will never do any Photoshop post-production work ever again without it it's a great tool so thank you for joining me this month for Tech Tuesday definitely check out my website ericagleyphotography.com and I hope to see you here next month thank you